pray stop rain, right? We always pray for rain, um, but this time I'm like, please, Lord, just let it stop. The strong storms just keep on coming here in the West, leaving many people worried their neighborhoods just can't take much more. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Alex Savage. Dangerous storms are crossing California tonight, and mudslides are one of the ongoing threats in many communities. All across the state, rescue crews remain on standby as waters rise in many spots. Heavy rain flooded the streets of San Francisco earlier today with hail falling nearby in Marin County as well. Here is a live look tonight at conditions in Southern California. You can see a very wet lens set up outside the Ontario International Airport showing the tarmac is wet tonight. Now there have not been any widespread travel disruptions because of these latest storms, but there are a lot of other significant problems. We begin tonight's weather team coverage with Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf, who spoke with people living near a series of mudslides in Torrance. Heavy rain falling again on areas in Torrance hit hard two weeks ago by a record breaking storm. Dramatic video from earlier this month of a mudslide erupting like a geyser. That would be bad. Yeah. A water main off Vista, Montana, busting, sending water rushing towards homes. It was just a river of mud just flowing down the street, and my whole front uh, was like mud, like this high. Thankfully, my planter saved our house. Joanne Shepard lives right across the street from what's now a massive hole in the ground covered by blue tarps. The pipe is totally exposed. This photo shows how crews temporarily fixed a small drain pipe underneath Vista, Montana, a road now closed. This nonstop rain is scary. With more heavy rain, the concern is right now that this could get even worse and bring even more mud into these homes. We're so afraid because if you look down the hillside, it's not just this one. There's a lot of tarps all along this hill. We're worried if this goes down, there's more up there. We've stabilized the hillside by covering it. Uh, the city retained a geotechnical engineer to perform an investigation. City workers filling thousands of sandbags Tuesday just in case this round of rain causes problems. Yeah. Scary moments from the last storm that have residents near this hill looking up. I don't normally pray stop rain, right? We always pray for rain, um, but this time I'm like, please, Lord, just let it stop. Like, we need a reprieve. And that was Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf reporting for us tonight. Staying in Southern California, some people in Ventura County are worried their neighborhood can't take much more of the rain and the wind. We're about to leave and all we just heard a big crash and came back and our half our deck is up now. But thank God, it, nothing, no, nothing structural, it's just the deck, so we're alive. A landslide forced some people from their homes in Coyote Canyon overnight. Neighbor Mary Jackson got a good look at the damage after sunrise. She says this area is known to flood. This stays flooded almost all year round, but it's much deeper now than it was before the big rains. And, uh, you know, some of our neighbors really suffer from it, so it's sad. And the earth needs the rain, you know. So it's like this mixed blessing and curse for people who are in the stream flow. Jackson says in the past, rescue crews have been forced to use heavy equipment to get to people trapped by rising water in this area. New video from the California Highway Patrol showing flood victims airlifted to safety in San Luis Obispo County. Rescue crews used a helicopter to hoist two people who were trapped by the rising waters in the middle of the San Marcos River. A third person in this area was rescued using a boat. Authorities say everyone was evaluated and they all appear to be okay. Well, in the midst of these soaking storms, city leaders in Rancho Palos Verdes are looking for help from the state to address a landslide complex. The city council is meeting tonight to consider asking Governor Gavin Newsom to declare a state of emergency because of these slides. The land has been shifting in this area ever since the beginning of the month. If an emergency is declared here, state resources could help to stabilize the land more quickly. I've been out here before to see um, if the land is moving even more, and it is. Uh, we see these homes that are now uninhabitable, and they're collapsing. We now see roads closing. If an emergency is declared in this area, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes would also be on track to seek federal recovery funding. 
It is unclear tonight whether President Biden will use a two day trip to California to survey damage caused by these recent storms. The president arrived in Los Angeles this afternoon. He's expected to attend a campaign fundraiser tonight. The White House says he'll deliver what's being called a policy speech near L.A. tomorrow, and then he'll head to the San Francisco Bay Area for even more campaign events. And people in the Bay Area are continuing to monitor these storms tonight. Here's a live look at conditions on the Golden Gate Bridge, where drivers are navigating wet roads still tonight. Conditions were a whole lot worse earlier in the day in this area. Heavy rain caused street flooding in San Francisco this afternoon. This is the scene here at one intersection. Video on social media shows drivers and even a bus moving very slowly through this flooded intersection. The water in this area has already begun to recede. And north of San Francisco, storms dropped hail in Marin County today. Video on social media shows the hail melting shortly after hitting this backyard and what looks like a trampoline there. Let's bring in KTVU meteorologist Roberta Gonzalez, who is tracking these latest storms. Are we through the, the worst of it yet, Roberta? We are, Alex. The worst of it has now traversed in the easterly direction. And now what we're looking at is your West Coast weather for today. Not only is it affecting the state of California, but also right there in the Seattle area. You can see the raindrops on the camera lens. 50 degrees was a high temperature. I believe they only had about a 17 minute break in the activity. We're in San Francisco. Over an inch and a third of rain fell today, and most of this rain was between 12 and 3 o'clock. High temperature 58 typically should be at 62. And the Los Angeles area, this really concerns me because it hasn't stopped raining. It's been raining all day long, and they're on their way to becoming the wettest February ever in the Los Angeles history. And this dates back to the records being kept in 1847. Wow. All right, here we go. We do have that area of low pressure, the main band just passing through the Bay Area, but you can see it's more like a training effect to run Los Angeles going well into the Mojave Desert. There you have the precipitation in earnest. This is the core, the center of that atmospheric river. It's right off the coast of the Pacific Northwest, and it continues to fuel the rain showers into Medford, Oregon, as well as Seattle. And you can see the bands of rain showers nicking that northwestern quadrant of the state of California. Then we have into the Bay Area where we saw the hail and numerous lightning strikes today from the North Bay into the Santa Clara Valley, including all points in between. And here's the training effect across Southern California. You could see the snowfall around Big Bear and then the rain continuing around the Barstow area, then funneling into Las Vegas. And this is why we do have a flash flood watch in effect for 30 million people living in the state of California. That encompasses a lot of real estate and it's it's not going anywhere fast as far as Southern California is concerned. Buying a bit of a break across Northern California today. All this is lifting towards the Greater Lake Tahoe area where it is going off. The snow continues to fall. An accumulation up to four feet above 7,000 feet. Now we're talking about another system out there that's going to nick Southern California by the end of the weekend. But you're only looking at about a third of an inch of rain still by Friday in L.A. and about a tenth of an inch in the San Francisco area. Dry skies to the north in Seattle through Friday. Yes, finally buying a break after morning showers in San Francisco on Wednesday. Dry leading into the weekend for the Chinese Lunar Parade on Saturday. And then Los Angeles, you're finally buying a break. Phoenix, we're talking flirting with 80 degrees by Friday. Alex. All right, Roberta, thank you. There is growing concern tonight about people living in dangerous situations during these storms. Fox 11's Christina Gonzalez shows us how some people are trying to get by while setting up camp near Southern California storm drains. Some vehicles barely making it through some of the flooded intersections off Tuxford and Sun Valley. This is what you see at the large sewers off San Fernando and Tuxford. People are living here, but it's not just tents and shopping carts. At least one of the gates is open. We've seen people going in and out, including one man who moved to the drier sidewalk under the freeway, where we attempted to approach him to talk only to run into this. Whoa, you okay? 
A small fuel container turns into a projectile as he tries to light a fire to keep warm, he explained. We asked why they are living at the sewers. You don't think the water's gonna affect you? He means on the tents on the higher wall next to the sewer, which business people nearby say is very dangerous, especially when the streets get this overwhelmed with rain. I called the 311, they sent the one truck the other day when it was raining last week. And they came and they stood over there and they say, oh, they're going to do something. And they, they were here waiting and looking, but nobody did anything. In Anaheim, during the last rainstorm, crews rescued a pregnant woman trapped in a storm drain opening up to the Santa Ana River. She's been living in that tunnel in there for a long time. And she lives in the tunnel, you know, with other people here that live along the riverbed. Back in L.A. again, we tried to warn this man. The will get really high. And yes, we did bring him back some coffee and food, but the reality, not only here in L.A., but all over, you've got officials trying to get people into shelter. It is not always easy. In Sun Valley, I'm Christina Gonzalez, Fox 11 News. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, he calls it the biggest case since O.J. Up next, the new lawyer for the man accused of being involved in rapper Tupac Shakur's murder heads to court with a request. And forget Grammar Check, a real life grammar expert has taken over space at one college campus here in the West. See what happens when she gets put to the test. I got a family that's hesitant to come in here to help me out on the bill because of the meteor and the circuit that's going on. And they want to know could they do it privately or affidavit or something. Those comments in court today from the man suspected of orchestrating the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. It is still unclear whether Dwayne Davis is going to be able to post the $750,000 bail. If he does, he'll be on house arrest until trial. Today, a Las Vegas judge granted a request to postpone the start of this trial. Davis's new attorney says he needs more time to familiarize himself with all of the evidence in the case. Prosecutors say Davis has admitted to being involved in Shakur's killing in a memoir and during interviews. Well, it's the biggest case that <laughs> since OJ. Why wouldn't you want to take this case on? I mean, it's going to be a historic case. I think it's a challenge, again, with the statements that already came out and to win this case, again, would be, you know, quite an accomplishment. Davis's new trial date has been set for November 4th. Rapper Tupac Shakur was killed 27 years ago during a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. Nearly 20 years after a newborn baby was found dead at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, investigators say they have arrested the infant's mother and she is now facing a murder charge. Fox 10's Lauren Clark shows us how investigators tracked her down in Washington. It's disgusting to me. It's completely disgusting. I don't understand it. October 10th, 2005, Phoenix police arrived to a call to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport after a discovery in a Terminal 4 restroom. They discovered a female newborn wrapped in newspapers and a white towel, stuffed in a plastic bag with red Marriott lettering, deceased. The baby's death was ruled a homicide and the manner of death as suffocation. The evidence on the scene indicated that the birth likely did not occur at the airport and the bathroom was where the baby was abandoned by the suspects or the suspect. The unknown child was affectionately dubbed Baby Skyler, and for years, detectives worked the case, even releasing a composite back in 2017 of what they believed the mother of the child looked like. Then in 2021, the FBI helped officers by using genetic genealogy to find a maternal match for the victim. That was cross-referenced with DNA collected from the scene nearly two decades earlier. Through the genealogy, um, we identified someone in the family tree. Um, that person consented to the sample and uh, led the investigation further to uh, Ms. Anderson. Court documents show plainclothes officers asked Annie Anderson to come outside of her home in Arlington, Washington, to look at her car. That's when police arrested her, just three days before Christmas, without incident. She's currently facing several felonies, including murder. This community that we serve rightfully expects that all of our victims are never forgotten. 
And that was Fox 10's Lauren Clark reporting for us tonight. Anderson is now awaiting extradition back to Arizona. In Southern California, San Fernando Valley, a fiery crash left one person dead and two others injured. Investigators say the three people involved in the crash were all teenagers. The driver here just 14 years old. It happened early this morning at a major intersection in Encino. Los Angeles police said officers spotted that vehicle driving with no headlights on and tried to pull it over. The driver instead sped off, lost control and slammed right into a pole. The car burst into flames. Officers were able to save the driver and one passenger, but said they were unable to get to the back seat passenger who died at the scene. Young kids do uh, unwise things. Uh, we all know that. It is absolutely not pay worth paying for your life with that. You know, it's, it, this is an absolute tragedy. And, um, you know, there are some families that are going to be suffering as a result of this. Investigators said the vehicle belonged to a relative of one of those teenagers, and they took the vehicle without permission. An investigation is underway. It's unclear whether there will be legal consequences for the driver involved here. The loved ones of a Los Angeles woman detained in Russia are worried tonight about her safety. Fox 11's Hal Eisner spoke with her former mother-in-law, who says she has seen some concerning video. If we do not help her, nobody else will. Eleonora Sabrowski is terrified for her ex-daughter-in-law, Ksenia Kavana, whom she describes so lovingly. She's so gentle. She's so sweet, always positive. This video is part of what's terrifying Eleonora. Her ex-daughter-in-law marched into a Russian regional courtroom, eyes covered and facing charges of treason for making a $50 donation to Ukraine. Although in a statement, the Russian Federal Security Service, or FSB, is accusing the 33-year-old of raising money, medicine, equipment, and ammunition for the Ukrainian armed forces. I am very worried about her physical being. I know that there is a lot of uh, physical abuse in Russian jails, uh, mental abuse. I am very concerned and my heart is breaking for her. We have seen Putin time and again incarcerating Americans. And now retired Marine Intelligence Officer and National Security Expert Hal Kempfer says the State Department is going to have to step in. But there's going to be a lot of diplomatic uh, back and forth, and we're going to find out what the Russians want in exchange for her. And uh, unfortunately, my guess is that she will probably be in custody for quite some time. And that's what her ex-mother-in-law is so worried about. It's why she agreed to this interview. I know that we need to create some noise. We need to get some attention to this cause. And we need to get her out of the jail. And despite the divorce in the family, she sends this message to Ksenia. I love you and uh, all our family loves you. And that was Fox 11's Hal Eisner reporting tonight. Carolina could face up to 20 years in prison if she's convicted. Up next tonight here on West Coast Wrap, one question stumped a grammar expert on the ASU campus. Up next tonight, the phrase that's keeping her guessing as she tries to help students. Plus, Alaska Airlines teaming up with the well-known Seattle brewery, the Custom Craft Beer, coming to your next flight. Getting back now to the storms crossing the west. The winter weather created a scene that looks like something you'd see in a snow globe today. A user on X captured these images in Columbia Falls, Montana. The National Weather Service has been warning drivers in this area to make sure that they are careful because the roads here are very slick with all that snow coming down. A Monterey County golf course has flooded for the fourth time in just over a year. At the King City Golf Course, water is pouring in from the nearby San Lorenzo Creek, which is overflowing because of the recent rainfall. Officials say they're working to figure out a plan to limit future damage. Repairs are expected to cost over four and a half million dollars. In Santa Cruz County, California, two businesses on the Capitola Pier are set to be demolished after city leaders determine those structures are unsafe. The city of Capitola has deemed the Wharf House restaurant and the Capitola Boat and Bait Shop structurally unsound. Officials say there will be a town hall meeting tomorrow night where city leaders and experts will talk about what comes next for the wharf and hear concerns from people in the community. David Morris of Capitola Boat and Bait Shop says he is determined to find a way forward. The impact personally for me, one is my family of my employees. You know, they, uh, they've stood behind me 
we fight, we argue, we cry, we laugh, and they don't have a job to come back to if I don't have something back out there. City leaders say the wharf should be completed by this fall, and they're using a combination of funds that includes Measure F, as well as state and federal grant money that the city received. A grammar expert who set up shop on the Arizona State University campus admits she does not have all the answers. Fox 10's Steve Nielsen put her to the test. It can be very intimidating writing a story with the expert on grammar sitting right next to you. But me and her are going to figure it out. Steven. Okay, I made that mistake on purpose. And if you caught it too and love grammar, oh boy, does the grammar table have a seat for you. Language should be here to connect us, to bring us together. Ellen Joven has traveled to all 50 states with a small table and a friendly smile, ready to talk grammar. So Joneses and then the apostrophe? Yes. Hey, that's definitely not my strong suit at all, so. So yeah, it's cool to like learn something new. On Tuesday, outside busy Hayden Library at Arizona State University, she talked with all sorts of students. Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Even the ASU University librarian. Library sounds like a good place to hang out and talk about grammar. Nerding out as much as you want, but don't take the rules too seriously. You don't give grades, do you, Ellen? I don't. No, she doesn't give grades. I tested that theory, handing her scripts from a few stories I wrote. This is literally the wording. His mom took him to the library where a professional yo-yo player was teaching tricks. Professional yo-yo player was teaching tricks. Was teaching tricks, was teaching... No, I think it's fine. I think I was waiting for an indirect object after teaching, you know, teaching kids tricks or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's fine. Phew, another story from last month might have got her. A golfer had a hole in one twice in the same round. What do you call that? So did I just stump the grammar lady? Hole in ones, maybe, hole in ones. I feel good about is that. It is it hole in ones or holes in, it has to, it has, I vote for what you did. Hole in one. I think we're good on this here, but what I, I do want to ask you. But I'm you, still reading it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> she has more to correct. No, no, we are moving on, Ellen. She wrote a book on her journey, Rebel Without a Clause. It's the words that bind us together, she says. So go easy on the rules, even the most controversial rule. It's pretty rare for someone to come up to me and say, what do you think about the Oxford comma? And not be waiting for me to say, I will die for it. You know, they want me to be very committed to it. Well, do you have a few questions for the grammar table and you missed her today? Good news, she's still around tonight and tomorrow throughout the Valley. We have a link at fox10phoenix.com to see where she'll be. Steve Nielsen, Fox 10 News. All right, a lot of fun at the grammar table there. Finally tonight, a rare craft brewing experience for Alaska Airlines customers. The airline announced today it has joined forces with a Seattle brewery to bring a custom craft beer to passengers. They're calling the India Pale Ale Cloud Cruiser. It's described as having bright orange, melon, and tropical notes. Cloud Cruiser will be offered complimentary in first and premium class. Customers in main cabins and select lounges will be able to buy it. Looks like a good one there. Thank you so much for watching West Coast Wrap tonight. We always appreciate it. And a reminder, before we go, you can stay up to date on all the stories we are covering here, including our weather coverage. Head to our website at westcoastwrap.com for the latest on these storms. And you can stream all our shows with the Fox Local app. Have a great night.